Um, also, we uh, t Tony uh, had wanted to be here, but he can't. Uh, but what uh, we wanted to do was talk a lot about the Basel Federation, and I just wanted to go and introduce Florian uh, to talk about Basel Federation. Thanks, Florian. Big round of applause for Florian. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, hello. So uh, my name is Florian. I hope you had a great lunch and are ready for more Basel goodness. Um, yeah, I'm working on the Basel Federation together with Tony, who unfortunately can't be here today. So um, yeah, it's my presentation now. So um, first I want to set the expectations. So um, this is about federation and not foundation. So I'm not talking about any governance plans, but I'm talking about a technical project. And the goal of the project is to make the Basel rules ecosystem more accessible. Um, more accessible mostly to users, but also to rules owners and maintainers. Um, second disclaimer, this is an early preview, so I don't think I'm going to take all of the 30 minutes. So we have more time for questions or a coffee if you want. So first, let's talk about the Basel rules ecosystem. Um, I guess most of you or all of you have used Basel, which means using rule sets. And there are actually many challenges when you want to use rule sets, especially if you're new to Basel. So the first challenge are dependencies. I mean, if you, have, if you want to use, let's say, rules go, you have to figure out what are the dependencies of rules go, because you cannot simply add rules go to your workspace file. You also have to add like, all the dependencies. And that also translates to the dependencies of rules go, which means the transitive dependencies. So you have to identify and use them in your workspace file. Um, next, if you've done that, you're not finished because some rule sets require some setup, they require specific tool chains, which also means you need to know like which BZL files to load and which uh, macros to call. Now, both of these points suffer from the same problem, which means there's no really no standard and no a uniform interface, which means um, there are some conventions on how projects structure the BCL files, but not, not all projects follow these conventions, which means it's like if you figure it out for one project, like a different rule set might have their BCL files in a completely different location. Now, once you've done that and you've identified the dependencies and the tool chains and what you need, um, there's an even bigger problem, which is versions. Like, at which version should you use rules go, for example? Um, that's not really trivial, especially if you use a lot of rules. You don't really know like, which version of rules go works with which version of uh, Skylib, for example. And as you, as, as you all know, um, Basel also has these breaking changes in the major releases. So it's also not obvious which rule set actually works with your version of Basel. <laughs> now, even if you figured out that, um, like, you don't want to be stuck in time, right? So if you're very brave, you maybe want to upgrade from Basel 1.0 to Basel 2.0 uh, eventually, which means breaking changes. So it's unclear or it's very hard to find out if you bump your Basel version, like, will your old rule set still work with that? So it's, it's a difficult question. And the thing is, the Basel rules ecosystem is growing, which is a good thing, but it also means as you get more rule sets in Starlog, like, these problems become more complex. So um, the good news is we have a solution to that, and that's called the Basel Federation. <clears throat> so basically, the federation, on a very abstract level, is um, Basel and a set of rules, all its specific versions. And we basically guarantee that this set of versions um, work together. <clears throat> it also means it's a black box for dependencies and tool chains. So you no longer have to think about like, which dependencies do I need to um, use rules go. You basically just tell the federation, hey, give me rules go and all of its dependencies. So that's why it's a black box. And finally, to um, address the last challenge that I mentioned, um, it's also a framework for understanding what parts, what, which rule sets you need to upgrade in order to um, account for moving from base of 1.0 to 2.0. So that was very abstract. Now, to get a, bit, a little bit more concrete, what is the federation really? So at its core, it's a GitHub repository, and it basically contains a number of projects, mostly rule sets like rule CC and whatever. And those repositories all have like the URLs, of course. They have their version identifier, and they have a um, checksum. And on top of that, we have a lot of BZL files that contain repository rules and uh, macros. 
And those are basically your interface to using the federation. So that's basically how you'll say, hey, give me rules go and all of its dependencies. Um, yeah, that also means, um, like, as I said, it's a black box, so we handle the dependencies and the tool chains and the setup inside those functions and BCL files. And finally, um, to make this whole thing complete, we have a CI system called Basis CI. And that system basically tests everything in the federation to make sure that our promise that everything works together is actually true. Now, to use it, I mean, you're probably familiar with remote um, repositories. So like you're using, let's say, rules go today, um, you just open your workspace file, you um, add in HTTP archive repository rule, and then you um, pull the federation version that you actually want to use. Then you load um, the BCL files in the federation and basically say, hey, give me rules go or rules CC, or whatever. And then you're still like, it's your workspace file, so you can still load other projects that you want to use that are not in the federation. And if you want to use a different federation version, you basically just change your HTTP archive rule or you change the URL in there. So I'll show you an example, which is, um, as you can see, we do some loads to load some built-in stuff. So it's the HTTP archive repository rule. And it's the maybe wrapper, which basically means um, you shouldn't load things that are already there twice. And what you do, OK, is you add an HTTP archive rule and say, oh, please load the federation from this URL. Use this version, which is our preview version 0.0.1. .0 and then you're ready to use rules. Now, in this example, we're using rules CC. What you basically do is, okay, you load um, this repository, so BCL file from the federation, and you load the rule CC function or macro. Then you call it, and that's basically bringing in rule CC and all of its dependencies. Then uh, you load a different file, also from the federation, which contains the setup that is needed to use rule CC, and you call this rule CC setup function. And I mean, this, this is still the same workspace file, so now you're free to load everything else what you want to do. Now, let's look at the things in detail. So, as I mentioned, rule CC, the macro brings in the dependencies and rule CC itself. In this example, you can see um, rule CC depends on Skylib. So, in the rule CC depths function, we call the Skylib function. Those functions are all in the repositories of BZL file, so it's all in the federation. And after bringing in the dependencies, we call another HTTP archive repository rule to bring in rule CC itself. Then looking at the setup, we basically do everything that um, we need to make rule CC usable. So we call the Skylib, Skylib setup function because we depend on Skylib, but you also call like some CC setup function. And those functions can be defined in BCL files in the federation, but also like in the rule CC repository or the Skylib repository. Now, this is not really nice because as you can see, like why do we have, why do we have two function calls when we could only have one? And also, we are duplicating the dependency relationship because we specify that rule CT depends on Skylib both in the depths function, but also in the setup function. So what about we remove the second one? That would be very nice. So this would be one way. Um, so we say we re remove the setup functions and we merge them into the dependency functions. So as you can see on the bottom in red, this is the new code. Um, we basically load the setup functions in the rule CC function, and we also assume that Skylib does the same. Now, as you can see on the left, the smiley is not really smiling because there's one big problem, and that is that Starlog actually doesn't allow this, allow this, allow this right now. So um, we cannot use load statements from within macros. So that's not really nice, but we have a solution. Um, that's a design document that I proposed three months ago. I think I should probably share it more widely. Um, so we have a solution which requires a change to Starlog. But for now, unfortunately, we have to stick with the setup function, which I think is still an improvement. Now, going back to the federation itself, there are actually multiple versions of the federation or multiple federation tracks. Because as I said, Basil um, does incompatible changes. So um, every major Basel release is not backwards compatible. So we have one federation track for each major Basel release. Um, that's a consequence of the semantic versioning. And it also means um, that every track basically supports one major Basel version and its descendants, so it's 
So there's one federation track for basis 1.0, which also supports 1.1, 1.2, and so on. And those translate to GitHub branches. And what you basically do is like, I think in most cases you say, okay, I, I'm using Basel 2.0, so I have to use the federation track 2.0, 2.x. Now, having multiple branches has an advantage, which just means if rules, rule owners decide to add a new feature to their rule set, which is backwards compatible, they can propose to add this new version to the, let's say, 2.0 federation track, but they can also backport it to the 1.0 federation track which means even the users that are stuck to Basel 1.0 could get like the new feature. And how they do this is simple. I mean, we are on GitHub, so you send a pull request. And our CI system that I mentioned before would basically make sure that, oh, the new version bump still works. Now, that doesn't come for free, unfortunately. So um, basically, if a rule set is in the federation, it has to follow some guidelines and it has to play nicely in some ways. So one thing is that you're no longer allowed to pin your dependencies, which because um, we have like this diamond dependency problem. So if multiple projects in the federation depend on basis Skylib, they should depend on the same version because if they don't do, then um, you're in for a lot of trouble. They also will have to adopt semantic versioning to make things consistent. And it's also like easier to talk about releases and semantic version numbers than just commit hashes. So that's an improvement. And they also need to um, fetch the dependency differently, ideally through the Basel Federation, to make sure that everything uses the same set of rules. Now, we know that this is more work on you, the rule authors and owners. So we're trying to reduce that work by um, com coming up with new workflows, by inventing new tools, and also by um, establishing policies and best practices. <laughs> now, there was a lot of talk about the Federation, what we want to do, what do we already have? So we spent a lot of time discussing this problem. I wrote like two or three prototypes for that. And we finally have a first very early version. As you can see from the version number, it's 0.0.1. So it's, in the, it's, it's a beginning. Um, right now it supports uh, C++, Java, Python, and Skylib. But I'm also working on including Go, Docker, Proto, Protobuf, toolchains, platforms, and Gazelle. And what I'm doing right now is a minimally invasive approach, which means, as I said, it would be easier if all the rule sets confirm to like a um, standard or convention of how they structure their dependencies. But right now, that's not possible. For example, rules go has like an awful lot of BZL files, and I don't want to like send the pull request and refactor everything. So right now, the federation tries to work around that and tries to use the existing BZL files, but with some checks and balances on top. I've also mentioned we have CI support, Basel CI, which is important to actually guarantee that things can be tested together. So we have specific integration tests, and we have pre-submit support for pull requests. Uh, finally, something that I'm going to discuss on the next slide in more detail is um, support for release infrastructure. So we've been approached by rule owners how to cut a release for their rule set, and that's something we want to support as well. Now, the plan for now is actually for this year, is to finish the work in progress, so onboarding rules Go, rules Docker, and everything, then cut a new release, announce it to you, and hopefully get your feedback. But it's fully expected that we have to spend several more iterations on this project. So we don't think we will get it right in the first time. Now, that brings us to the future. So, I mean, as I said, like the idea, the basic idea is to um, make the ecosystem more accessible which also means not only supporting the users, but also the rule owners and maintainers. So I've mentioned this like multiple times before, best practices are really important. Like it would be nice if every rule set confirmed to like a well-known standard, because like when looking at the rule sets, I see that rule authors like basically all solve the same problems again and again. So it would be nice if we could basically like take that workload from your shoulders and basically show you the best path forward. Now, there are already some best practices, um, as you can see on our homepage, but I think we should expand on them. So one thing that was clear during the Federation is, like, they're not only dependencies, they are user dependencies, which means what you actually need if you want to use that rule set, but they're also internal dependencies. So what you need if you want to develop that rule set, if you want to test that rule set, or if you want to deploy that rule set. Uh, finally, one big source of um, problems are custom repository rules for us. 
So for example, Gazelle um, has this Go repository, uh, repository rule. And normally you would assume, okay, you can always load the dependencies of a project and then the project itself. But the thing is for Gazelle, some of its dependencies are brought in via the Go repository rule, which is actually defined in the Gazelle project. So it's like a catch 22, so you have to load Gazelle first before actually being able to load the Go repository symbol and bring in its dependencies. So that's something we want to work on. Finally, uh, finally what I mentioned on the previous slide, um, releases are important. And we have a project called Rules PKG, and that project basically offers build rules that you can use to build a release tarball of your project, which means um, that those build rules basically generate release nodes for you, and they also provide you a tarball archive which contains all the code that your users need. So it basically strips out all like the test stuff and the internal stuff. And that's something um, yeah, we want to offer to you and also support on CI by doing pre-release testing, for example. And there are basically two approaches. So some projects like Rules Go are very active at cutting their own releases, which we call bottom up, but some projects don't cut releases at all. So we thought maybe we could support that by offering the ability for top-down release cutting, which means we would run the federation of its member projects at head for each project. And then if we identify one set that works together, we would cut releases automatically and say, okay, like these rules now have a like federation release, whatever, because they work together. <laughs> but that's something we, we offer. And of course, like people can decide if they want to use that or not. Now, speaking about Basil itself, there are more changes that we could make that would make life easier for all of us. <clears throat> One thing is, how can we support multiple Basil versions? And um, yeah, that's some ideas that Tony came up with. It's um, the question like, how do we treat the question of which Basil version do I have, which features are supported? Um, we can improve on that by basically being able to query Basil, hey, which features do you support right now? It's also workspaces are a big point of contention because I feel like the original design didn't anticipate many of the use cases we are, that we are now having. So we could improve workspace files and make them completely de declarative or imperative, not like a mix. And finally, the thing that I mentioned before with the ideal Basel Federation, um, there are a lot of restrictions around load statements in workspace files or in Starlog. And I've been approached by users that actually had the same problem with this inflexibility. So maybe we can solve that because that would make the federation easier, but I think that would also make some of your use cases easier. Yeah, so as I said, like it's very much work in progress. Um, it's still very early. So um, I'm happy to get your feedback and to answer your questions. I mean, you can reach me or Tony via email. Um, we're on GitHub. Um, we, you can also use the Basil Dev mailing list, or you can find me at BaselCon and ask me questions. So yeah, as I said, like it's very early, so the talk is very short. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you to the amazing event team. And yeah. <clears throat> so I'm open for Q and A. Thanks, Florian. I appreciate uh, taking time. You can hold on to okay, it for a minute okay. if you want to, in case you might flip back and forth. Once again, the mics are in the middle. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions on Basel Federation? We can uh, chat until people can <laughs> okay, uh, sure. stand up. I also can grab a mic and we can run it over to folks as needed. Thanks for that talk. I, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of the Federation, right? Thank you. I mean, not just the Star Trek Federation, but. <laughs> but the okay, jokes please. don't get any better. It's a free conference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm more of a Star Wars fan, so. Uh, yeah, okay, let's start with the uh, mic here. Oh, Hello, uh, hi. Oscar from LinkedIn. Uh, has there uh, been any thought uh, put in about running Basel in uh, an environment that doesn't have access to the internet? Is the Federation gonna help with that? Because that's one of the biggest pain points. Yes, yeah, so one idea was if we had a Basel Federation that works, um, you could basically um, download the entire state. And there's like, um, which is the basis sync command. You could basically um, create a local snapshot of that. So you would need access to the internet once, but then you could use that specific snapshot of the federation locally. 
So, so the Federation Tribal includes all of the other rules in its release. It's not just pointing to the... No, it's actually, it's actually pointing to them. But you could run Bazel once in your workspace and do Bazel sync, and then it would fetch all the external repositories. So that would basically create... I mean, the thing is, it's not really perfect, because I think if you run Bazel clean, it would go away. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'm sure we could... So, build tools on top of that to actually provide you like a tribal that includes everything. So, so one of the things we have had to do is run Basil Sync, but with that flag that gives you a resolved BZL file, and then okay. have to manually tweak, tweak all of the URLs in that file to point to internal copies mm. that have been run through security and licensing. Like we have requirements before you import something, mm -hmm. and that is a major pain point for running Basil on the CI. So. It's just something to think about in the general. I mean, the, it's actually a very good um, question because so when writing the test support for this on CI, I'm, I'm also doing a lot of like workspace manipulation to rewrite workspaces to like fetch actually a tarball and use a local repository rule to reference the contents of the tarball. So I think that tooling we could extract into a different tool to actually do what you want to say, okay, um, it's fetching everything and rewri rewriting the workspace file to point at the local archives. I mean, I actually haven't thought about that, but we could use that infrastructure for that. OK, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, a couple of questions. So it sounds like rules should expose some sort of like common you know, test entry point for you to run some tests against the rule, because it's, it's unclear like how would you exactly like test a rule I, I made. OK, so um, that's also a very good question. Um, so right now, if you have a rule set, most likely you run on Bazel CI, which is build kite based. And I mean, we, we can easily add that. So normally, how this works is every project that, that runs on BuildKite has like this YAML file that basically specifies your build targets and test targets. And right now, the Federation basically t takes these files and runs these tests. I see. Uh -huh. But you're also able to specify different tests. But right now, it's like manually curated. So um, we re still require YAML files to test that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, and what exactly do you mean by uh, not pinning to like specific versions in my rules? Because like if I'm depending on some other rules, pinning means reproducibility for me. Do you mean like so that you could override this in in your workspace or? Yeah, I mean so ultimately the federation has to be um, the has to be in control like which dependencies to fetch it with which sure, version. Yeah. So you shouldn't just hard code say hey I want Basis Skylib at one point whatever. Um, so that would be a problem. But at the same time, I need some specific version when I'm developing, you know, like so. Sure, but that would go through the federation. So you would basically specify, oh, in the workspace, I want to use the federation at this version. And you would use that Skylib version, which is included in that federation. OK, got it, got it. So you basically wouldn't know about the, the Skylib version number. You would only know about the federation version number. Got it. And we would guarantee that it works for you. Mm -hmm. Make sure you remember to introduce yourselves. And I'm going to uh, go up top to the balcony first for the question. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm Stepan from Aspect.dev. I wanted to ask about uh, CI testing and um, automated testing. Uh, what about uh, interoperability? Um, like, if you want to test uh, inter uh, interoperability between uh, different rules versions, um, if they have, like, at least 10 different uh, rules which are not directly dependent on each other and each of them have like 10 different versions. Um, are you going to test each version with each uh, other version just to make sure they're compatible? Uh, and uh, I think it will grow exponentially if there are a lot of rules and a lot of versions which are going to be tested. Uh, so uh, who are going to... Uh, write those tests, and um, is there some uh, way for a rule developer to like, make sure that he wanted to test uh, his rules with uh, some different rules uh, in particular? So we don't test like every possible combination. What we do is we usually start with one set of versions that we know that works. And then what you basically, how you test a new version is by creating a pull request. And in that pull request, you can basically change as many version numbers as you want. And then we, CI gives you a result to say yes or no. So we don't like, take the approach of testing like, all possible combinations. We're just fine with like, having one set of versions and build on top of that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Jordan Adler. 
Um, one challenge I've had with interop and composability when dealing with rules and kind of a large set of rules is the extent to which some of the foundational rules are still native Bazel implementation mm -hmm. as opposed to in purely in Starlark. How do you expect to handle that problem? So right now we um, focus on purely Starlark-based rules. So also um, the early members are RuCC and Java, for example, which are like going from native rules to Starlark rules. Um, I think with the operability with the native rules, it just means we test it against a specific Bazel version. And I mean, if that works, then we know, okay, these rules, these native rules also work with everything that is in Starlock in the Federation. So you don't expect to necessarily accelerate the project or process of, of ch changing these native rules into Starlark implementations? I mean, you expect that there would be an ongoing, long-term... It, it would be nice if it was faster, but I, I mean, I cannot really, like, it's not like in my authority to tell it because it's like it's like different teams. So I don't know like what are their plans. So for example, I'm working closely with the Rule CC team, which is Marcel, for example. So I don't know like what's the state of their migration. I'm just trying to support like what's in their repository, like the current state. But I actually don't know like what's like what's the timeline for the migration. Um, I guess Joe would be a good person to answer that. Yeah. Um See me afterwards and we can talk about that because we have time for just maybe one or two more okay. questions. So right. thanks so yeah, much. Thank you. Hello, uh, <clears throat> Kyle Cordes again. Um, so one of the earlier speakers, I forget which, mentioned that the workspace files for running machinery were really, like, really want to be a package management system. Mm. And it seems like Foundation is right in the middle of that. Um, what are your thoughts on how it might grow into that, that package management system wants to exist? <sighs> I actually don't really know. I mean, as I said, like we, we outlined some ideas how we could improve the whole workspace thing. Um, I'm not sure if we ever get to that. So right now, the solution was basically for the Federation to build something within the boundaries of Basel and the workspace mechanism that we have right now. Because we feel that that already alleviates some of the pain. But for the long-term vision, I think it's also, like so far, it has been like mostly internal design. So I, I've talked to Marcel, like Rule CC owners, but I think once we get it out and get feedback from like in the wild from real users, um, like it might change dramatically. So that's why I want to get like Rules Go and everything on board so that it provides a real value to people so that they actually want to try it out. And then like, I feel like the future is very open. So we don't have like a very strict vision or something. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Silverman from Blue River. Uh, one thing that I've run into a lot of the time when using external rules is I want to rehost them somewhere that I control so okay. that you avoid uh, some external hosting site uh, mm -hmm. disappearing in the future. Uh, does the Federation have any plans for supporting uh, remapping all the URLs to some other location for downloading all the files? I think that goes back to one of the first questions, which is, um, I think we would need to invent that same mechanism to, for that feature to say, OK, we can remap the URLs or host them somewhere else. I mean, so far, usually most projects are hosted on GitHub and on our um, Basil, CI or Basil Mirror. So I think like, those two sites won't go away soon. So. But I, I understand your, your problem. So I think it's if we had the tooling for the use case for the other question, we could build that on top of that. And uh, GitHub, we've recently had a problem with a project moving to a different name on GitHub, so then all the old yeah. downloads went away, so it is a problem even there. Yeah, we also had that. I, th I think in the long term, we want to move to the Basel mirror, because then we can also track like download numbers and metrics, and then we don't have this problem anymore. But yeah, that's something, like I ran into the same problem, so I, I can feel your pain, so. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, then, then thank you very so, much. Uh, uh, sorry, just quickly wanted to um, say a few words. I'm John, for those of you who didn't see me earlier, I'm John Field, I manage the Basel team. Um, two responses to previous questions, or partial responses, you can ask me more offline. One is, um, in terms of uh, native rule uh, migration Starlark, that's happening, it's not gonna happen immediately. The, the Federation work is not going to be predicated on that happening. Um, I think the way forward is to, uh, even though it's imperfect, is is to to deal with treat that as a Blaze version issue and manage it at that level. Um, so, getting the federation right is not going to be predicated on 
native rule migration, but we're going to do our best to account for the fact that it's not Starlark. Uh, that's one point. The other point is, in terms of package management, I think the question, the, the assertion about package manager was made somewhat ironically in the sense that uh, it hit, it, it started to creep in, uh, our workspace facilities have started to creep into the having elements of a package manager, and I think we don't want it to go into the mode of being a full-blown package manager. So this is an effort to do less, to, you know, we don't have, you know, fancy SAT solvers doing constraint solving to figure out what the right a version of rules that interoperate is. This is less ambitious than a package manager intentionally. And, and the hope is that this, this will therefore be more manageable. Um, and if, if you want to ask me more about any of my responses, talk to me or Florian later. But I just want to represent sort of the whole team's perspective on this. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to thank Florian for the uh, Basel Federation talk. I wasn't kidding when I said I think it's one of the most interesting and important things that are uh, happening for the community these days. So let's give Florian a round of applause. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah.